at the skill level I am right now, I feel like I climb Mount Everest. Um, I, it feels great to accomplish this knife, to finish it. Uh, a lot of things didn't go per plan, I guess. Um, there were a lot of frustrations. I couldn't get a few things ground the way I wanted. I couldn't figure it out, but finally I got it done. Uh, I even uh, gave up making it. I put it away and came back later this year and finished it. As one fan commented on YouTube, this is the holy grail of the uh, stock removal method. And he's absolutely right. I mean, take a look at this. That's a lot of steel that was removed. So, yeah, it took me a while. Um, like I said, I started this knife. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture to prove it. I started this knife on um, November 17, 2017, year 2017. I kept working on it and I couldn't figure out how to make um, everything well rounded here and here. So I, I once part was higher, when you twist it, it would, the, the tip would be lower. So I couldn't figure out how to make everything centered. I gave up, I put it away and uh, what was it February 26th of this year 2019 I went back at it after I finished Tom, Tom's cleaver I uh, went back to it and finished it there are several reasons why I made this knife and first one is to show you guys that it can be done with just basic tools if, even if you don't have a, a milling machine a lathe it, it still can be done it'll take you a while but it can be done Second is uh, to be the first one on YouTube to make this kind of knife. Uh, I've searched many, many times and I couldn't find anybody who made this knife freehand. So it, it kind of feels good to be the first one in the entire world to make this knife. Hopefully this video will become popular and will bring more views, more subscriptions. So we'll see. Time will tell. And the third reason why I made this knife is to go beyond my comfort zone, uh, to explore new ways of making knives. So it was basically sculpting from a chunk of steel into this, uh, what I call a beautiful nail. I will not be making another one, so please don't ask me how much it cost. Can you make me one? I will not be making one. All right, this one is for me to keep. Uh, if you guys want to buy another one or get one, uh, you guys can buy it through internet. Go to Blade HQ or any other knife store on the internet and you could buy it there. There was a question, why not heat up the the blade portion of the steel, you know, grind it flat and then heat it up and twist it. Well, the problem that the problem with that thing is uh, once you start twisting any portion right here, it can twist out outward. So your tip is not going to be centered. Plus, I don't have anything that big, any of those big wrenches to twist the steel. I don't have any of that stuff. So, this was the simple or the simplest way in my mind that I could have completed and I got accomplished. The reason why I drilled bigger holes in my design versus the original design is because in the original design you have a fuller running on all three sides and I was not gonna put a fuller in there and so that's why I went with the bigger holes. When I was making this knife I was heavily relying on two videos and pictures but one of them was Jim Skelton's review of the knife so I would pause the video look at the, how the knife looked and there's another video I'll show you guys. Uh, this person does a CAD drawing of the knife and I got a lot of information how to make this knife especially the tip portion because the tip curves and that that video helped me a lot like I mentioned before there are many things I skipped while making this knife uh, one of them is the fuller and if like I said before if if I was to put one in you guys would have been waiting for a video for I don't know, another month or so plus it was kinda I didn't want to put fullers on all three sides. It's just time consuming. Uh, another re uh, another thing I didn't do is I didn't heat up the blade all the way through. Like I said in uh, part two of the video, I didn't want this portion to warp. 
it probably would not work but I didn't want to chance it I mean after you spent close to two months making this knife and something to go wrong I just couldn't live with it as mentioned previously I did not sharpen this knife dagger because in the state of California it is illegal to have a dagger or a tri dagger so right now it's not sharp not even pointy I mean maybe maybe hurts just a little bit but it's not sharp so it's perfectly legal it's a nice fancy uh, nail or a toothpick uh, toothpick ice pick <laughs> the other thing that I didn't do to the knife is I skipped putting all these grooves in the original design there's a groove every few millimeters or a few I don't know quarter of an inch or no probably one eighth of an inch across and it looks nice but I, I I wasn't gonna spend that much time putting all those grooves into the handle so I showed you that it can be done and the rest is just extra time I did not make the threads at this portion right here because those threads that's why helps to put the sheath in and screw on and the, another one is I did not make the sheath for it so I'm just gonna leave this as is so those are all the things I skipped making this uh, knife is it perfect no um, it's very very difficult to keep everything round uh, everything level when you you know when you rotate it to keep everything level but I am super super proud of this knife um, the only thing that you could notice while visually looking at it is this portion right here see how it's bent not bent but ground this way versus all these parts right here are nice and center they run to the point they're um, identical or symmetrical and they run up to the point symmetrical and then when you get to this part it's like yeah this part goes way off so that's what happens when the edges are not equally the same width when they come to the end what was the most difficult part about making this knife like I said uh, keeping everything uh, centered same diameter handle same diameter uh, blade portion um, those were the most difficult parts the other thing like I said grinding the tip oh it drove me crazy I spent half a day trying to figure out how to grind this tip and I did not want to mess it up so what I did I had a little paintbrush stick and I started grinding thinking oh it'll be easy looking at the picture it's just a flat flat grind and but then when you look at the when you look at the from the front the the tip does not curve it's just flat straight line going down I don't know if you could see it let me move it around so I plus this was not full size so I went out and bought a this used to be a longer stick so this is 7 8 thick wooden dowel and I cut it up to pieces and I started grinding so this this first piece was about this long and I kept cutting off cutting off pieces because I couldn't figure out the um, how to grind as you could tell I kept grinding grinding couldn't figure out the angles so finally I figured it out see how it curves finally I figured it out well no finally I ground it perfectly and then I forgot how to do it because what happens when when it's uh, cut off right here at the at the nose or the tip you lay out all your angles and when you start grinding you grind those all all those marks away and then you have to visualize where your next step is to grind it so I couldn't figure out why it wasn't curving at the tip because check it out if you're looking at it so you could see the mark right as I'm twisting so as you you grind you could see that it, it 
it's twisting, right? So as I'm grinding, you see how the the um, line is moving? That's the bevel. Bevel's twisting. When you get to the tip, look which way it goes. The opposite. See it? So it, it spins this way, and then at the tip it spins the other way. So that's what I couldn't figure out. That's why I was scratching my head. I almost, ah, it was frustrating. So finally when I figured it out, I started grinding this. And like I said, I ground off all the marks that were the next step for me for the second. So. I would grind the first portion and then when I flip it over to grind this part the marks were gone so I had to stop put the camera away because I was trying to record every angle of that grind and I put the camera away I placed the tip that I ground perfectly I would place it like this and I'll be looking at it Oh, okay so I gotta grind this part okay I'll grind a little bit then I placed a wooden piece next to it, look at it again and that's how I managed to grind the tip because it's so tricky so that that those two things were the most difficult part about making this knife the tip and keeping everything centered cylindrical um, the thing that scared me about this knife was if I was to mess up on a tip or anywhere that's it it's junk because it's a one-piece deal so I kept that in the back of my mind while I was working trying not to mess it up so it's a one-piece deal you mess up anywhere it's done if one of them holes were off-centered or you know different spacing it would look like junk but everything came out to my view perfect as I want. I left this center pin in there because I wanted that to remind me that's how I made this knife this is what I went off and also if if any of you are gonna attempt to make this knife if you're gonna start on the handle then leave the blade portion round this way you have something to sit on this way your knife doesn't wobble and you could do all your layouts or leave like I did leave the handle portion nice and round don't touch it this way you could do all your layouts on or drill all the holes um, you got some nice and thick you know to go off of if you cut everything off trim it and this is the only thing the centerpiece that's left when you go to lay out other stuff you know with the um, uh, high gauge it's gonna wobble so that's just a little tip I have not figured out how I wanna finish this knife meaning because it's a uh, 01 tool steel and it's starting to rust already I might do a DLC or Cerico or maybe dip it in a, a ferric chloride no idea yet but somehow I gotta protect it I'll probably do a Cerakote on it maybe black color I'd like to thank Jim Skelton for letting me use the audio for this video that I made. Um, thank you, Jim. And the other thing is that I'll be shipping this knife to him, to Texas. So he's going to review it. And you guys could check it out later on when uh, his video comes out. I will post it uh, as an end screen at the end of this video. So you guys could check it out. So I need to hand sand it again because while I was uh, taking pictures of this knife you know you're placing on the rocks and everywhere it scratches the blade so I gotta retouch it again and ship it out to him today out of all the knives I have made I've never seen so many positive comments about this knife um, you guys are awesome thank you some comments made me laugh some comments made me proud uh, 
thank you very much I appreciate it. it it showed me that you guys absolutely love this uh, video the the build of this knife you saw how much work went into it and it, it showed through your comments thank you I appreciate it as Jim said this is a trophy knife this is my trophy I'm very proud of it and I'd like to thank all of you for watching my videos especially those that don't particularly watch the ads or but you let the ads run you know you let the ads play thank you so much for that that helps me out a lot it keeps me going um, I don't know what video I'm gonna make next um, maybe do a little shop tour show you where I make my knives um, but stay positive if you give up on making a knife just put it aside don't throw it away you already spent money on it you spent time on it just come back to it when you feel refreshed with more energy more enthusiasm as you could tell you could still finish a knife after a year or more take care guys